Hi everyone, this is Mrs. Dealman. I'm the assistant librarian at Spicewood and I'd like to read you one of my favorite books today. It's called Those Shoes and it's written by Mary Beth Boltz. It's illustrated by Nora Z. Jones. I have dreams about those shoes. Black high tops, two white stripes. Grandma, I want them. There's no room for want around here. Just need, Grandma says. And what you need are new boots for winter. Brandon T comes to school in those shoes. He says he's the fastest runner now, not me. I was always the fastest runner before those shoes came along. Nate comes to school in those shoes. Antonio and I count how many times Nate goes to the bathroom, seven times in one day, just so he can walk up and down the hall real slow. Next, Alan Jacoby and Terrence get a pair. Look at everybody in line. Look at him. Do you notice his shoes? Then one day, in the middle of kickball, one of my shoes comes apart. Looks like you could use a new pair, Jeremy, Mr. Alfrey says. He's the guidance counselor. He brings out a box of shoes and other stuff he has for kids who need things. He helps me find the only shoes that are my size, Velcro like the ones my little cousin Marshall wears. They have an animal on them from a cartoon that I don't think any kid ever watched. Do you think he wants to wear those? When I come back to the classroom, Alan Jacoby takes one look at my Mr. Alfrey shoes and laughs, and so do Terrence and Brandon T and everyone else. The only kid not laughing is Antonio Parker. At home, Grandma says, how kind of Mr. Alfrey. I nod and turn my back. I'm not gonna cry about any dumb shoes. But when I'm writing my spelling words later, every word looks like the word shoes and my grip is so tight on my pencil, I think it might bust. On Saturday, Grandma says, let's check out those shoes you're wanting so much. I got a little bit of money set aside. Might be enough. You never know. At the shoe store, Grandma turns those shoes over so she can check the price. When she sees it, she sits down heavy. Oh, what do you think she's thinking? Maybe they wrote the price down wrong, I say. Grandma shakes her head. Then I remember the thrift shops. What if there's a rich kid who outgrew his or got two pairs for Christmas and had to give them away? Have you ever been in a thrift store? It's where you can take things that you don't need anymore and then they can sell them to somebody else who needs them and the prices are usually very reasonable. So it's a great place to go get things and it's a great place to reuse items instead of just throwing them in the trash can. We ride the bus to the first thrift shop. Black cowboy boots, pink slippers, sandals, high heels, every kind of shoes except the ones I want. We ride the bus to the second thrift shop. Not a pair of those shoes in sight. Around the corner is the third thrift shop. I see something in the window. Black shoes with two white stripes, high tops, perfect shape, $2.50. Those shoes. Oh, don't you know he's excited. My heart is pounding hard as I take off my shoes and hitch up my baggy socks. It means a pull them up. How exciting, Grandma says. What size are they? I shove my foot into the first shoe, curling my toes to get my heel in. I don't know, but I think they fit. Hmm, do you have to curl your toes to put on your shoes? I wonder if they really fit him. Grandma kneels on the floor and feels for my toes at the end of the shoe. Oh, Jeremy, she says, 
I can't spend good money on shoes that don't fit. I pull the other shoe on and try to walk around. They're okay, I say, holding my breath and praying that my toes will fall off right then and there. Hmm, but my toes don't fall off. I buy them anyway with my own money and I squeeze them on and limp to the bus stop. Do you think he's making a good decision here? It was a good decision to buy something that somebody didn't need anymore so he didn't have to throw them away, but not sure it's a good idea to wear shoes that don't fit. At home, a few days later, Grandma puts a new pair of snow boots in my closet and doesn't say a word about my two big feet shuffling around in my two small shoes. Sometimes shoes stretch, I say. Grandma gives me a hug. I check every day, but those shoes don't stretch. I have to wear my Mr. Alfreys to school instead. One day during math, I glance at Antonio's shoes. One of them is taped up and his feet look smaller than mine. Hmm. After school, I head to the park to think. Hmm, Antonio's there, the only kid who didn't laugh at my Mr. Alfrey shoes. We shoot baskets. A loose piece of tape comes off of Antonio's shoes. It smacks the concrete every time he jumps. I think I'm not gonna do it. We leap off the swings. I'm not gonna do it. I wonder what he's gonna do. We race from the end of the playground to the other. I'm not going to do it, I say. Do what? Antonio says, breathing hard. Grandma calls for supper, calls me for supper and invites Antonio over too. After supper, he spies my shoes. How come you don't wear them? Antonio asks. Mm, I shrug. My hands are sweaty. I can feel him wishing those shoes were his. So when your hands get sweaty, sometimes it means you're kind of nervous. That night, I'm awake for a long time thinking about Antonio. When morning comes, I try on my shoes one last time. What do you think he's going to do? Before I change my mind, the shoes are in my coat. Snow is beginning to fall as I run across the street to Antonio's apartment. I put the shoes in front of his door, push the doorbell, and I run. Think he did a good thing? At school, Antonio is smiling big in his brand new shoes. I feel happy when I look at his face and mad when I look at my Mr. Alfrey shoes. You know, it feels good to do something for somebody else, doesn't it? Even though you might still be frustrated about the situation, but you know that you did a good thing. But later, when it's time for recess, something happens. Everywhere, there is snow. Leave your shoes in the hall and change into your boots, the teacher announces. Leave your shoes in the hall. Hmm. It's then I remember what I have in my backpack. New boots. New black boots that no kid has ever worn before. Standing in line to go to recess, Antonio leans forward and says, thanks. I smile and I give him a nudge. Let's race. And that's the end. Do you think he made a good decision? Do you, have you ever wanted something so bad and then you share it with somebody else or give it to them? Maybe it's not working out for you. That's being very kind hearted and very caring. So I hope you enjoyed my favorite book and um, keep reading. <laughs>